Hi, I'm Rob Butler, I'm a cardiologist in Stoke. Uh, my area of expertise is putting balloons and stents into people's arteries to unblock them, often in the context of a heart attack. So PCI, percutaneous intervention, is where we can uh, unblock an artery by a keyhole technique. So historically, that was done from the leg arteries. So from the femoral artery, we'd come up into the heart. More recently, probably over the last 10 or, 10 or 12 years, we've moved almost exclusively to accessing the heart from the wrist arteries. And it's a little bit more fiddly, but much safer. It's a smaller artery, we can stop it bleeding, whereas femoral problems could be much harder to deal with. And we thread a, a fine tube up around into the heart, goes into the heart arteries, we take some pictures with some dye, and then if there's a, a blockage, and knowing that we can treat, put a, blue, a wire down through it, put a balloon through, and that balloon can then stretch the artery up, unblocking the, the plaque of cholesterol. And then we tend to put a wire mesh called a stent in and that scaffolds the artery open because otherwise the elasticity of the artery will compress it back down again. And we do that in the context of a heart attack, but we also do it in the context of angina as well. The, the risk of further treatment mechanically, whether that's balloons and stents or bypass surgery, is very much down to how much we treat the risk factors. And the evidence would suggest that if we aggressively treat risk factors, we get the cholesterol down to below a safe level, people lose weight, improve their fitness, we treat blood pressure and diabetes, that you can stop the plaques developing further. Now that doesn't happen in everybody, it, it's not guaranteed, but overall you, you, you re dramatically reduce the need for further interventions, whether that's balloon stents or bypass. We tend to lump them together, it's about mechanical stuff. You know, if you need a balloon and a stent or a bypass, it's not, that, it's not that one is better or worse than the other, it's about where the narrowings are, about which one is best. After a, a balloon and a stent, the, the, the only issue really for a few days is, is, is that we've made a hole in an artery that has to heal up. Once that's healed, um, then really you can go back to your normal self. It's about if we've unblocked it in the context of a heart attack, the heart attack's more important. It's about letting that heart muscle heal before you do anything. If you've had an angioplasty or a, 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 an a stent for, for angina, it's then a case of just gradually testing yourself out to see how much you can do without your angina coming on. Unfortunately, you'll always need medication after we've been near you with either a heart attack or balloon stents, bypasses, because that's part of the preventative strategy to try and stop you coming back to us in the future. So, a heart attack, four to six weeks, but it very much depends on the, on the size of the heart attack. If you had a very small event, within a week or two, you can be pretty much back to normal. If you've had a big heart attack, you may never return completely to normal. After balloons and stents, usually um, it's a week or two, um, gradually building up, but a couple of days really in terms of heavy lifting and carrying stuff. After a bypass, the surgeons say six to 12 weeks, but it's probably three to six months before you feel back to your normal self.